Okay, this is gonna be a serious topic. Believe it or not, these are all dead MacBooks, even though their physical appearance looks pretty good, but you're not gonna be able to use it just because the onboard soldered solid state drive died. If you wanna buy a new MacBook, you can choose the SSD size from the smallest to the largest capacity available. But no one's gonna tell you, no matter how small or big your storage size is, all of them have a limited lifespan. So technically, on one fine day, it will certainly die. Keep watching if you wanna know what that means. If you open up the bottom case of the Mac, you will see these two rectangle chips here. So these chips literally are the dead onboard storage. And of course, these are the SSDs for the M1 Mac family. But the question is, why would they die too soon? Or maybe the right question to ask is, what can we do to extend the lifespan of these soldered SSDs? And maybe you also wanna know, how can you repair and replace these soldered SSDs when they're dead? We will discuss several solutions to this issue by showing you some real case scenarios that we're dealing with pretty much every week for now. Part 1. The problem with onboard SSDs According to the Apple schematics diagram, this 250GB of SSD storage was produced by either one of these brands. It could be Western Digital SSD brand, formerly known as SanDisk, or it could be Kyoxia SSD brand that was formerly known as Toshiba, or maybe the Hynix brand, a part of SK Hynix product, or the very least we can find in these contemporary Macs is the Samsung SSD. So none of these manufacturers claim that their SSDs will last and live forever. Furthermore, they actually released technical documents explaining the maximum lifespan of their SSD lineup. In other words, they also claim that their SSDs will certainly die when it reaches its maximum lifespan. So here's where the nightmare begins. Knowing this fact, Apple still decided to make them soldered and not easily replaceable. So you, as the end user, can do nothing about all these soldered components including this pre-configured 250GB soldered SSD. You won't be able to upgrade yourself to higher capacity if it's too small, and the worst case scenario is you cannot even replace it if the SSD is dead. So here's the truth you need to digest. The main reason why soldered SSD storage is a bad idea is not purely because they're not upgradable. But the main concern that you should worry about is when the the SSD decides to die on itself. People can generally accept nowadays that you cannot upgrade the soldered SSD yourself, but little do they realize that these soldered SSDs also have a finite lifespan. A lifespan that gradually deteriorates every single time you copy a large file to your desktop location. We will explain more details regarding the SSD lifespan and how to preserve it later. So when your SSDs finally depleted all of its usable lifespan, the SSDs will just die. Usually no signs or warning, no clicking sound, no smart failure notifications, it will just die. One of many reported symptoms that the SSD failure is imminent, that your Mac will become unusually slow, frequent hanging beach ball when loading files, and a couple of days later, a client's Mac suddenly shut off during a light usage, and you'll never be able to turn it on again. Another client reported to us that his MacBook was working fine last night, he just did some paperwork and after completing his job, he closed the LCD lid and set it to sleep mode. But guess what? The Mac refuses to turn on the next day in the morning, PRAM reset and all combination keys didn't work at all. We performed several diagnostic steps and voltage measurements on the logic board before confirming it's the SSD issue. This situation is very similar with the ones we had for the 16-inch 2019 that was sent all the way from Hong Kong through international priority shipping by FedEx. He said, I remember that morning I was still able to use it and then I just closed the top cover without doing anything to bring it out. This is how I usually use it and I was trying to use it on the train at the time I didn't get any response after open up the top cover. This was the last moment I used the MacBook. After performing a detailed diagnosis on his Mac's logic board, we found out that all 6 SSD chips were dead and shorted to ground. I'm not sure if that's sabotage or what because it's really peculiar for all of them to die at once. So what can you do to prevent this issue from happening? At the end of this video, we will explain two major reasons why your SSD dies and how you are going to deal with it as well as what kind of upgrade you can do if your SSD dies. The following principle we're going to explain to you today is also applicable to all newer M1 Macs family as well. Part 2. The reasons why your onboard SSD dies. 
In this section, we will separate the cause of death into two different categories. The first one, the one that you cannot control, and the second one is the one that you can control. Well, sort of. So you, as the end user, the easiest way to understand why you cannot control some SSD death is simply because of manufacturing defects from the local components around the SSD itself. These local ICs and components are actually the supporting circuit vital for SSD operation. So this kind of defect is usually beyond our control because this issue originates from the factory that produces literally thousands of IC chips in a day. So it could be any faulty ICs or capacitors or components but the best example for this IC chip we're talking about is the TPS6180 a bug converter for the SSD made by the Texas Instruments. So when these bug converters are randomly assembled to the max logic board on the assembly line, it really depends on your luck whether you're getting a chip with a better lifespan or maybe your life hates you so much and you'll always be the unlucky one, then you're gonna get defective ICs with a shorter lifespan. This explains why we've had a very pristine MacBook logic board, but still the TPS6180 exploded like there was some liquid spill on it. So it really depends on your luck. And the major problem when this TPS6180 exploded is that it would usually pass the 12 volt PP bus directly to SSD storage and thus killing all of them. So 90% of the cases where the TPS6180 exploded, usually you're going to end up with some dead SSDs too. When you remove the IC from the logic board, you can clearly see the chip is totally fried with burn marks on it. If this unfortunate thing happened to you, you don't have to blame yourself because it's not your fault. But still, you need to send it to the repair shop to replace the fried SSDs. But keep in mind, your datas are long gone. Next, let's move on to the second reason why your SSD dies and that is because your SSD has reached the end of its lifespan. This one, you kind of have control over it because we can take several preventative measures to slow down the aging process of the SSD. Now, let's just assume if every circuit is perfect, no IC chips explosion, etc. The very first thing we want you to understand is that the SSD's lifespan is directly proportional to the storage size. A much bigger capacity relates to a much longer lifespan Span, and this lifespan metric is measured in TBW. For example, take this chart from the SSD manufacturers we've shown earlier. You can actually see the pattern that describes the increase in TBW with every increase in capacity. Say 250GB SSD capacity will have a 150TBW, then 500GB capacity doubles the TBW value to 300 and the 1TB capacity further doubles the TBW limit to 600TBW and so forth. Now, what on earth is the meaning of TBW? TBW is an abbreviation for total bytes written or some people call it as terabytes written but all these terms are basically the same thing that simply means the maximum amount of data that a solid state drive can write in its lifetime. In simpler words, a 250GB SSD will die after you wrote 150 terabytes of data to it. Or maybe you want to say a 1TB SSD will die after you copy 600TB of files to the SSD. So the second reason why your SSD dies would be revolving around this TBW quantity of how to preserve and minimize the TBW usage. So let's say if you have a WD brand soldered SSD with a total of 250GB capacity inside your MacBook and the online data sheet over the internet says that a typical 250GB WD NVMe SSDs will have a 150TBW limit. This 150TBW limit means that this SSD is only able to write 150,000GB of data during its whole lifetime before losing its ability to store data and possibly die. So when you save a 100GB movie file to your desktop, it will consume 100GB from the total space inside the 250GB SSD. At the same instantaneous time, it also means that you have consumed 100 gigabyte SSD TBW from the total capability of the 150,000 gigabytes limit. Then you continue to copy a huge raw video files to your desktop, say another 140 gigabyte. So now your storage only left another 10 gigabyte free space. And of course, the same behavior would reflect on the TBW bar on the right side. So right now you realize that you only have 10 gigabyte remaining free space. Then you finally decide to delete all of them and clear the SSD. So here's what 
most people never realize. Yes, you finally get the 250GB free space again, but the value on the TBW bar on the right here remains the same and not decreasing like the storage space. What makes it worse, this value will keep climbing every single time you copy more files to the SSD, bit by bit, time by time, until over a long period of time it reaches the 150TBW limit and the sorted SSD will finally die. Well, this is all because you relied on the internal storage too much. You copy a lot of files to it and thus consuming its remaining lifespan or TBW much faster. With that being said, the very first thing you want to do to preserve the lifespan of the SSD is you have to stop copying huge files to your desktop. You need to minimize the internal SSD usage or maybe download a lot of movies to your internal storage or maybe to back up your personal photos and videos from your iPhone to your Mac. This is the reason why some people overcome this problem by relying on the external USB-C drive to store their important data. Everything they downloaded from the internet is directed to a specific folder on the external USB-C drive and thus preserving the free space and TBW of the internal sorted SSD inside the MacBook. Only crucial applications will be installed to the internal drive and usually they will buy and use cloud storage to store all the important things. Several video editors we know also use external NVMe drive to keep the project files externally and edit them directly from there. This might sound like a cheapskate solution, but if you're not someone rich who regularly change your MacBook just like you change your clothes, then maybe you should consider to practice this method. Well, another factor that considerably eats your TBW is the memory swap issue. The easiest way to know if you're having the memory swap issue is by opening the activity monitor switch to the memory tab and look at the bottom most of the window and find the swap use. During normal circumstances, this value should be 0 bytes. But if you find this value is not 0, like this one right now, around 200 megabyte swap use, then this is usually because you don't have enough physical RAM. If you're gonna say, ah, that's just 200 megabyte of swap use, it's just a small swap amount, no big deal. Well, you wanna hear what I'm gonna say next. This M1 MacBook has 8 gigabyte of RAM. The hardware for this 8 gigabyte physical memory is located on top of the M1 package itself and it is actually an LPDDR4X DRAM chip. Let's just be honest, right? Nowadays, 8GB of physical RAM is not enough. There's no way on earth to run the latest macOS and apps with the basic 8GB configuration. So when you boot a MacBook to the moderate desktop and not doing anything, the CPU will usually allocate around 2GB of RAM to the macOS. Then you open a lot of tabs on Google Chrome and it will consume another 3GB of RAM and next, you open a lot of apps simultaneously at the same time and the RAM usage will continue to spike up reaching the 8GB until it doesn't have enough free memory left and starting from here, the macOS will start to swap a small portion of your SSD as RAM. This is the 200MB swap you saw in the activity monitor just now. Now, I want you to remember that this small portion of 200MB is always coming from the SSD and it will never be a part of physical RAM. So, what's really really bad? about this is the small amount of 200 megabyte here is used as random access memory or RAM and the word random here means the data coming in and out is continuously changed. It is randomly moving in and out when the CPU says so. So it's not just a static 200 megabyte. When a new data comes from the CPU, it will delete the old data inside the SSD and write another 200 megabyte of new data. This cycle will continue as long as you turn on the computer and as long as you still see the 200 megabyte swap use in the activity monitor. If this still looks nothing to you, look at the TBW bar on the right here. It will keep increasing over time just because a 200 megabyte is continuously swapping inside the sorted SSD. So theoretically, by looking at these numbers and the TBW limit it has, your sorted SSD will certainly die when all the remaining TBW is used. All of these troubles are happening just because you don't have enough physical RAM. During the final QC stage, we've checked the DriveDX apps and you can see that this Mac has a 250GB of SSD storage and it is out of warranty and it says here the SSD has consumed a whopping 278TBW or 278,000GB of data to the internal sorted SSD. So when you look at the TBW chart, it really has surpassed the limit outlined by the manufacturer. That is 150TBW of data and that is the reason why you can see the SSD lifespan has decreased from 100% to 80%. All of these troubles 
troubles are happening just because you don't have enough physical RAM. Miraculously, it still seems to work. But personally, we don't think this SSD will last really long from now. And I hope it's not going to return back in here with the same pile of these dead MacBooks. The only good thing about this RAM compensation method is the macOS will run smoothly even when you don't have enough actual physical RAM. So we have told this client to minimize his multitasking behavior and try to do only one or two things at a time to minimize the RAM usage. Then we suggested to him to back up everything on his SSD and store everything in the external drive to minimize further TBW usage because with 80% lifespan left, you never know if the SSD is going to fail anytime soon. This RAM swap principle also applies to all Intel MacBooks, so it would be better if you can upgrade your 8GB solded RAM to 16GB with any expert technicians. Well, you can try to ask your local techs whether they can do it or not. Let's just take another M1 Mac with 16GB of RAM as an example. This MacBook also just finished its 1 year warranty, but the SSD status still remains 99% healthy lifespan with only 5.5 TBW of SSD usage. This is because the 16 gigs physical RAM is already enough for general multitasking so that it doesn't require further RAM swap from the SSD. But be careful, the 16 gigs of RAM will start choking too if you open 100 Google Chrome tabs as well as huge project files. So please monitor the RAM usage using the activity monitor. After all these explanations, you might think we will suggest you to stop buying Apple products. But yeah, the problem with Apple fanboys is that when you told them no more Apple, they will end up buying a lot more. So maybe it would be better if we give a real suggestion and solutions. So if you do not own a MacBook yet or maybe planning to buy a new one, here's how you should spend your budget. First, make sure to maximize the solid RAM capacity first. It should be at least 16 gigabytes of RAM, whatever higher is the plus, and only then you can choose the storage capacity you could afford with whatever kidney you have left, while the SSD itself is replaceable and upgradable, and we will discuss it in part 3. Just one more thing to add. The same TBW principle actually applies to your iPhones or Android or any smartphones. Larger SSD size literally means higher TBW limit and thus your phone will have a longer lifetime. So if you are a sentimental man and love to keep these devices for years, make sure to choose the maximum SSD size available hoping that it will last longer. So here's just a quick recap of the reasons why your onboard SSD dies. Part 3. Replacing the dead onboard SSDs In this section, we will show you the SSD replacement methods for the M1 Mac, T2 Mac, as well as the T1 MacBook. All of them are closely related to each other, but honestly, this video has been a bit longer than what we usually do. So I think it might be better to reserve this topic in our next video, where we will explain all the available choices for your solid SSD upgrade, as well as the rules applied to replace them. We will touch several things like the landing patch rule and the requirement it takes to successfully replace the solid SSDs. So I guess that's all we've got for today. Make sure to subscribe to not miss this next video and hit the like button if this video helps you somehow. And see you again at iBoff RCC channel, reverse engineering at its best. Have a great day and thanks for watching.